So I bought a Wii U today. Well, let me explain. Now I know the talk right now is all about the Switch from Nintendo and rightfully so. It's a very successful system for them right now. A great rebound from what happened with the Wii U and a lot of the Wii U games that are getting ported over are finding better success on the Switch than it ever did on the Wii U. Even the Wii U's best selling game, that being Mario Kart 8, doesn't matter, shows up on the Switch and is like, what, 30 million units or something? Yeah, it's uh, it's not even close when you compare the numbers, but I think now is actually a pretty good time to buy the Wii U. I've seen people online mention it here and there. I mean, Scott has like six of them at this point, but it kind of makes sense for the position that the Wii U's in and kind of where I see it going over the next, I'm gonna say about five years. So guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new to this Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And what I'm gonna do today is show you what I managed to pick up at the price that I grabbed everything. It's like a big bundle of, of games, the system and some controllers and why I think the Wii U could actually become a pretty solid collector's item over the next, like I said, five, six, seven years. So first of all, the Wii U itself. I don't actually see it pop up very often locally on places like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace around me. I'll see a lot of other systems pop up, even ones you wouldn't expect, but strangely not the Wii U. And I think a lot has to do with the overall sales numbers for the system being so low, it's just not exactly plentiful. There's not a ton of them out there. Like I see the original Wii everywhere. Like it's super cheap to find one of those. And that's because they sold over a hundred million units for the Wii. The Wii U though, about 13 and a half, yeah, not that many. Which makes sense why the Wii U online is still anywhere from 150 to $200 complete for the system, the gamepad, and then all of the cables that came with it. I know it was 300 when it came out, but realistically looking at it, that hasn't gone down as much as I thought it would have. And a lot of that has to do with the gamepad. Believe it or not, online, like if you go on eBay, this unit, just the console part, it's like 50 bucks at the most, the gamepad is the part that's two thirds of the cost or more. Seriously, finding a good gamepad online, it's like a hundred, $120 on its own. This one I managed to find isn't too bad. It has some dust here. I was concerned usually about the screen, but you can get a screen with the digitizer, that being the touch part on top for like 20 to $30. Not bad if you just wanna replace the, the part of the gamepad that's going to get scratched up and the part that you're gonna look at the most. The, I mean, the gamepad itself is all glossy, which means it will attract all kinds of little micro scratches and naturally fingerprints as you're using it. But still the part that you usually wanna take a look at is this screen here. And that's typically what ends up being broken whenever I see it online. This one is in pretty good shape overall, the screen underneath and then the plastic touchpad on the top. Then you end up with all of these cables that was even more than what we had with the Wii, which the Wii wasn't bad. It did have that sensor bar, but other than that, you know, you had like your AV cable and power cord. This, however, you still had cables for something like your game pad and then a little cradle for it and stuff. There was just more things around the Wii U that you needed. See, the interesting thing about the Wii U itself is if you have the console, it doesn't mean a whole lot without the game pad. Like the game pad, everything hinges on this working and being around. But as I look around more and more online, the gamepad is being separated from the console. And if you get to a point where these are just being destroyed or worn out or thrown away, and we just have nothing but these consoles left over, yeah, the Wii U is just gonna become rare because of that on top of really a small amount of supply compared to other consoles. I guess the one good thing is the Wii U console, this part was actually pretty reliable. Not a lot went wrong in this. The most I would have to fix on these is when like kids would shove popsicle sticks or coins or something inside the slot loader. So I guess that's one plus. We don't have to deal with like the yellow light situation that we see a lot with the backwards compatible PlayStation 3 systems. But so far so good with the console. Everything worked there when I checked it out. And then I also had two of these like Wii U Pro controllers that came with the bundle. Uh, they're kind of dusty, like <laughs> you can see that here. I don't think they've been used much recently, but I can clean that up pretty well. These were great because the battery life in these controllers are ridiculous. I mean, seriously, it's it had to have been like 60 hours or something wild with these controllers. I don't remember having to charge these very often. Now, some of that has to do with the Wii U just having these 
very long droughts at times when it comes to games, so you wouldn't really be using them as much at the time. But still, this overall was a very well done controller by Nintendo. And you know what? They carried it over, I would say, pretty well to the Switch Pro controller. I also got three Wii remotes in the bundle. I mean, that was cool to have that with the, with the Wii U because it has the Wii backwards compatibility. And if you modify the system, which let's face it, a lot of people are probably doing that now, you would even get GameCube support. But I mean, hey, I'm not gonna argue with three more Wii remotes, I guess. This gold controller also came with it. I, this I think was for the GoldenEye game. Uh, this is chewed up pretty bad here. Maybe I can find some of these like gold analog sticks online. I don't know if this is like a certain size that you need for it with this type of controller. It was just something extra. This is one of the one of the ones that plugs into like the Wii remote on the bottom and then you kind of leave the Wii remote off to the side there. So right now we have the two pro controllers, three remotes, the Wii U with all the cables, pretty good condition overall. And then that gold controller is about $300 total for everything. But then we start getting into some of the games I managed to grab uh, and it gets even better. See Animal Crossing City Folk, uh, that was on the Wii. I be, I remember playing this a little bit back on the Wii, but I fell out of Animal Crossing after the GameCube version, just, just to be honest. I just After that, I think I was pretty much out. And then we had Super Mario Bros. U right there. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this has... Oh, this is better than I thought. This has Mario Galaxy 2 inside. I wonder if they knew that. I mean, I guess because it's like they were playing it on the Wii U, I'm sure. A couple of scratches down here, but I'm sure that'll work. That's... Huh. That worked out pretty well then. Mario Galaxy 2 is actually still kind of valuable overall. Mario Kart 8, I have this game like twice on the Switch now, but I mean, hey, there's the original there. Breath of the Wild, which this was pretty cool to see this one in, in the bundle here. I never played it on the Wii U. I just played it obviously on the Switch, so I might actually check that one out. And Twilight Princess HD, great game here to have. Smash Bros for Wii U there. And then we had Mario Party 10, which if I remember right, this is the game that everyone got annoyed about because you were like in the car together. I, some of these later Mario parties kind of just blended together for me, but I remember this is the one that kind of took away the fun of being different points on the board and uh, of course, trying to ruin your friend's experience. So the interesting thing about the different Wii U games right now is some of them are jumping in price more than I would expect. And I don't know if once again, that's just because they didn't print as many copies of the different games because of the overall lower install size on the Wii U. You're not gonna, you know, make a millions and millions of a game like Devil's Third if you don't think they're, you're gonna sell that many. That is a game, by the way, that is over a hundred dollars, which it's not even a good game. Also on top of that, you do have some of like the accessories that are official from Nintendo. Like I've had uh, the extended battery portion pointed out to me from Nintendo in uh, in Japan, and that's like over a hundred dollars. I have seen some extended batteries you can get from third parties for the Wii U gamepad, and those are more reasonable, less than 20 bucks for the most part. But I guess if you're trying to collect and get everything in the box officially, yeah, just the little battery pack, some cost you over a hundred bucks. So overall, I'm pretty happy with what I got here for about $300. And I do think right now is a good time to start building up that Wii U collection a bit, if you are expecting to maybe collect it going forward. I mean, considering the gamepad and the Wii U that itself need to kind of come as a pair for the system to be worth much of anything. I can see a future where the game pads start kind of dropping off face of the earth and we just are left with several consoles that really don't have much of a purpose. And you know what, right now isn't a bad time to grab them if you're planning on doing different modifications as I've seen people like MVG show off what this system can truly do. It is kind of a shame that Nintendo didn't really, I, I guess, get as much as they could out of this console. However, what tends to happen from systems that fail is they turn into pretty strong collector's items. If you look at something like the Vita right now, as an example, I do kind of see the Wii U going down a similar path, provided all of the games don't get ported to the Switch. But even then, I just think the overall idea for the system is strong enough to make it interesting for collectors to look into. But let me know what you guys think about the Wii U in 2021, or maybe going forward, do you think it will get to a point where it will be very difficult 
to find these systems. And who knows, maybe some of these games, I mean, it might be worth just trying to fill out the collection now for different Wii U games kind of ahead of time. I've never really been able to get ahead of the curve on some of these different collections. Uh, generally, we end up picking it up as the things start becoming more valuable and rare, like the Vita, where the games are getting so expensive, and the GameCube, naturally. But I think I might start looking more and more into the Wii U, just in case. Also, the system has folders, right? So, I mean, why not? But anyway, thanks guys for watching. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning up these controllers. And you know what, I might actually pop in Twilight Princess HD because it's been a while since I checked it out. Uh, who knows, maybe later on this year, I'll even be able to play it on the Switch. I'll see you guys next time.